Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gamer Tidicom video, we're going to be taking a look at some leaks and benchmarks, as well as some overclocking results of the KB Lake 7600K. For folks who want the 7700K, you're going to have to wait a bit longer, but I'm sure you can do the maths to figure out what the differences are going to be between the 7700K and the 6700K based upon the 7600K results that we're going to be going through in just a moment. For those of you who do not know what KB Lake is, it is essentially an evolution of the Skylake microarchitecture. Now, basically, Intel are clocking the chip a little bit higher. It has better FinFET process, uh, improved 14NM manufacturing process, in other words. It is going to natively support the 200 series union point um, chipset, although it is backwardly compatible with the 100 series. And that also means you're going to get a few optional extras. For example, USB 3.1 is natively supported, assuming, and that is a very big word, assuming that you do actually have a 200 series board. And you're also going to have native support for Octane technology. But, with all of that said, what type of performance differences are we going to be seeing between the two um, processors, in other words, the 7600K and its predecessor, the 6600K, well, around 9 to 10%. Now, you might say to yourself, that's not too bad, but it does fall very much within the line of the clock speed differences between the two processors. So, the 6600K is running at 3.9 gigahertz. We are referring to non overclock speeds here. Whereas the 7600K runs at 4.2. Those are the turbo speeds. If you're going with the base clocks, then obviously it's 3.8 versus 3.5 respectively. However, while that might not be a massive big deal, um, obviously if you've got the 70, uh, 7600K in your sights as an upgrade from the 6600K, you might want to rethink things unless overclocking is your thing. There are some early overclocking results which have started to appear online. Now, I don't really feel I need to tell you this, but I'm going to anyway. Overclocking is silicon lottery. So in short, you might be really unlucky or you might be super lucky with the piece of silicon that you happen to purchase. But with all of that said, XFastest, who are yet a, another um, Asian website who happened to get a lot of the gear early, which is not a bad thing at all. Um, they happen to have decided, well, hap not happen to have decided, they have decided to run their own preview of the 7600K, and they have decided to do a lot of overclocking. Now, what they managed to do is squeeze the processor up to a rather impressive 5.1 gigahertz. Immediately, people are going to start saying, well, gee, the 6600K is capable of doing 5 gigahertz, and that is undoubtedly true. However, there are some benefits to this, and that is primarily the voltage itself. Um, the voltage that they were running through this chip was actually kind of low, at just 1.328 volts. And that is also supporting DDR4 memory running at 3,777 megahertz, which is going to provide an astounding amount of memory bandwidth, to be honest. I don't think it really takes me to tell you that that is going to make this chip either really desirable if you're a hardcore overclocker, or if you've already got Skylake, probably, eh, it's okay. So really, it comes down to what processor you currently have. If you do have Skylake or a pretty decent CPU, you might not want to jump on this straight away. You might want to wait for Zen. Or if you've already got, let's say, a 6600K, you might want to wait for the 7700K. Either way, I suspect this processor is going to be pretty popular, especially with overclockers, um, which naturally... Overclockers are going to primarily be buying the K variant anyway because it's unlocked, therefore you can adjust the multi. I don't think it's an amazing chip. It's pretty much business as usual. The IPC has a very titchy gain. It's around 1 or 2% IPC from what I'm reading. Obviously, the results are pretty early at the moment. Um, and 1 or 2% is not exactly amazing. The built-in graphics are much improved on the Cable Lake CPUs. 
But the reason I'm not making a big deal of it in this particular video is, well, let's face it, it's graphics. And this is primarily a gaming channel. I suspect most of you are not necessarily going to care about the integrated graphics processor in your new CPU. You're probably going to be buying the new Radeon or latest GeForce card. So let's just be totally up front here. With all of that said, I think that's just about it for this particular video. I'm going to let you all go. For those wondering, I'm finally starting to feel better from my cold slash plague I've had for about a week now. Um, the PS4 Pro article is written. It is having the final images added in as well as my references. It is currently... Actually, I'll tell you how many words it is. Let me move you on over. I actually don't know how many words it is. Let's see. According to WordPress, the word count is 5,939 words. Um, so that's kind of a lot. But I think it's going to be pretty awesome. I said on Facebook, because um, a couple of people keep messaging me, which is fair enough because I'm running way behind on it. But basically... It got delayed because I found another interview which happened to add more points and back up some of the data that I originally had. So I basically decided I'd rather delay it, add in more data, make it look even better. And at this point, it was originally supposed to be a 4,000 word article. It then was supposed to be a 4,500. It then went to a 5,000. And now we're at 6,000, and now I just need to call it, because if it gets much lengthier, it's just going to be ridiculous, and this is only part one. So this part is dealing with the hardware and explanations of the hardware itself, and the second part will be going into, well, pretty much everything else. So tiled rendering, anti-aliasing, and everything else under the sun, but I suspect you're probably going to be pretty happy with this article, especially if you're either very technically inclined you're gonna love it and if you're not technically inclined and you just want to know the basics of how things work you've got all of the information there so you can start doing your own research so it's a good springboard anyway hopefully you've enjoyed this video the normal stuff if you've liked it subscribe or you know like it that wasn't very smooth but anyway you get the idea like the video comment subscribe do all that normal stuff and I shall see you soon Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.